This show is brought to you by the Email Laundry, making email safe for your customers. Visit www.theemaillaundry.com forward slash tublog for a very special listener offer and to have your MSP's domain filtered by the Email Laundry for free. You're listening to Tub Talk, the podcast for IT business owners with our featured conversation with Richard Tubb and Rob Ray of Datto. My name's Jeff Nicholson, and this podcast is all about helping you grow your IT business. In this episode, Richard talks with Rob, Vice President of Business Development at Datto, a company which provides data protection for managed service providers and their clients. They talked about the importance of security, what open mesh can bring to MSPs, and the future of the new merge company formed by Datto and Autotask. This episode was recorded via a video call between Richard and Rob in Edinburgh for the Autotask Datto First Look Roadshow. And now, without further ado, here's Richard Tubb talking with Rob Ray. Hi guys, Richard Tubb here. Now, one of the biggest IT stories of 2017 was the merger between Autotask and Datto, two of the biggest companies in the MSP space. So today I'm joined by Rob Ray of Datto, and we're gonna talk a little bit more about what that merger means for the wider industry, what it means for Autotask, Datto, and customers as a whole. How are you doing, Rob? I'm fantastic, thank you. Cool, we're here in Edinburgh in Scotland, as you can see from the beautiful array of whiskey bottles and things that we've got behind us. Which we've not partaken in. We should be. We yet. should. <laughs> we so totally we'll, we'll be, move so. through this. <laughs> but obviously, um, you've worked in the industry for a long time, like 25 years oh, or so. Oh, it hasn't been that long, but <laughs> probably. <laughs> yeah. So you've got tons of experience with helping IT solution providers to, yeah. to meet their ambitions and their goals. How long have you worked at Datto now? Uh, Datto, I'm coming up to my five year anniversary, if you can believe that. It only seems like yesterday, but it's yeah. coming up to five years now. And your job title here is um, Vice President of Business Development? Correct. Cool, cool. So, the Datto and the Autotask merger, if I understand it correctly, you've mm-hmm. got Vista Equity Partners, mm-hmm. um, and they're an investment company. That's they cool. owned Autotask. Mm-hmm. Um, purchased Datto mm-hmm. and then felt that, that it was better for the two businesses to to work together. Mm-hmm. Uh, am I getting the, the story correct? Then? Yeah, and, and uh, you know, it kind of made a lot of sense because it, Autotask is a tool that is designed for MSPs to help them, you know, move their business forward, track their tickets, remote monitor and manage uh, their end user. So it's a tool for the MSP. Whereas, uh, and they're starting to merge in or getting into the sell through products like the endpoint backup and uh, file sync and share and those kinds of things. And then you look at Datto, uh, which has always been predominantly data protection. And of course, we're a sell through product as well that is a channel only. So uh, you add in the networking piece, and all of a sudden, um, when you put it all together, there's this, this almost complete, at least on the data protection side, option for MSPs along with a tool that has all the hooks and the, and the uh, alerts and the reports that uh, just make the MSP's life easier. Um, and then you start adding in innovation like SaaS protection and, and networking and all the other areas that we're starting to get into. It just, it's a complementary fit and I think that's where Vista saw it and I think that's why uh, they put the two together. And so far, uh, it's been phenomenal. It's been a, it's been a, such a great um, merger. Like we've we've done a couple of acquisitions in the past, and Autotask has done a couple of acquisitions. They're never easy. This is uh, this is really kind of like uh, fits like a, gl- a glove really well. So, and how big is the company now? The merge company. Uh, so we're now up to fourteen hundred employees as a combined company worldwide, and I think that's spread out now over like thirty five offices and four hundred petabytes of cloud data. It's it's quite significant. I would yeah. I would suggest it's probably. Uh, the largest MSP-only company in the business as yeah. a result. So, yeah. so Autotask are a very well-known company mm-hmm. um, for their professional service automation. Um, lots of companies, lots of the top MSPs use it to run their business. Mm-hmm. Datto, equally well-known mm-hmm. for, um, for, the, uh, for the data recovery and data protection. Equity Vista Partners, uh, sorry, Vista Equity Partners, mm-hmm. not, not as well known. What do we know about them? Can you tell us a bit more about them as a company? Yeah, I, uh, they've uh, obviously been around for some time. They're, they're uh, a very large equity company. They tend to focus exclusively on, on software vendors that are out in the marketplace. So, 
you know, again, when they're they're looking at uh, not just the acquisition of, of Autotask or Datto, but just the merge the two together, uh, they've got a lot of experience in this realm. The other beautiful part about Vista is they have a good understanding of the IT channel. They understand small, medium business outsources uh, IT these days, and that's a, a rapidly growing uh, business. So, you know, it's, it's a significant investment, not just into... Uh, great technologies, but into, a, in essence, a go-to-market strategy as well with the with the uh, MSP channel. What was the ambition behind the deal? What do what do you see coming out of the two businesses coming together? Well, I, I think you know it, the with the technologies being very very complementary. Um, I think that you know if you look at what an MSP really needs in their business, it's that single pane of glass, that single bill. You know, making making life easier because. When you eat into uh, time, uh, that eats into profitability. So, you know, what are some of the things that we can do to make the MSP's life easier, better, faster, so that they can service their customers more, bill for more hours, those kinds of ideas. So, I think that's where you come and and you know you look and, and put the two together again. It, it allows us to be very creative and innovative with the MSP in mind. Uh, it allows us to to do uh, very uh, cohesive things and and streamline things with that single pane of glass, single billing, unification and all that. But I think it's also equally important to say that um, the open ecosystem is going to be critical through this. Open ecosystem meaning that if you are not a fan of data, you love your your continuity solution, your backup solution, your networking gear, that you can still use Autotask and manage that stuff. And very similarly, if you do, if you were in love with your PSA and your RMM, but you like you like Datto, you know we make sure that we integrate with those solutions as well. So we're not here to uh, dominate the, the MSPs or force the MSPs to have an all-in-one solution, but we're sure going to try to create the best solutions at the best prices and and really create a, a very MSP-centric company and, and let the MSPs choose what the best products are. Yeah, so you want to make it an easy choice for them as opposed yeah. to bullying them and saying, yeah. hey, you must use these products. It's, it's, there's a, the, the old expression, we're going to earn your business. And I think that's I think that's the direction that we're, we're very much headed towards is we want to earn your business and we're going to do it through great technology and innovation and pushing the ball forward and, and making sure there's lots of margin for the MSP to do that at the end of the day. Yeah. So the, uh, there are loads of really, really good employees in mm-hmm. task and mm-hmm. um, within Datto as well. I know Austin McCord has uh, stepped in as the uh, CEO of yep. this uh, new company coming together. Mm-hmm. What does the rest of the executive team look like at the moment? Have we got any ideas of what that looks like? Yeah, there's, there's been very, very little change. Uh, and, and I think it's a combination of that. You, you've got the sell to product with the PSA and RMM and the sell through product with the, with the uh, data protection, the... Uh, the networking and stuff. So it's not so much that this was uh, a merger and and eliminate duplication. This was a merger for us to be able to make it a bigger company. So, you know, we've had very, very little change from that perspective, including on the executive team. If anything, uh, we're now complementing each other extremely well with even more thought leadership and more direction and more uh, just connections within that MSP industry worldwide that it's going to allow us to, to push it even faster. So we've got a lot of products and solutions mm. with that. You talked about some of the acquisitions that has taken place over mm-hmm. the years. Autotask have, um, have bought in RMM companies and, and other bits and pieces there. What's it going to look like going forward? And what's the focus over, the, say, the next 18 months for the joint company? It's a good question. Um, in myself, in my role, I'm very tactical. I'm kind of looking at what we're doing right now. Uh, and you know, when you when you look at like networking for us is only about a two and a half year old uh, project. It's it's going to take a few more years to uh, to really uh, take hold of of that marketplace and become like a mainstay product. So uh, you look at all the work that we need to do to to for that unification between the two projects, while maintaining that open ecosystem. So that's kind of where my day to day is actually managed. But if you take a look at Datto, like uh, we're an innovation company, and you mentioned Austin himself. Like Austin, he's a tinkerer. He plays around with different technologies, and I would suggest that Datto's growth uh, over the last ten years of our existence has been because we like to play around with stuff. We like to tear it down, rebuild it, make it better, make it faster, make it cheaper. So when we look at that, along with our our go to market strategy, which is MSP only, there's lots of opportunity out there, and. DattoCon last year, we we uh, did uh, just a real raw beta of, of virtual desktop and see, you know, cloud-based virtual desktop. What can we leverage there? What's the interest of the MSP? What's that market look like? 
Um, you know, this year uh, we've been talking a lot about managed power and we've actually launched all that. Again, what we're doing is, is taking not so much traditional products, but products that are out there, making it cloud-based, making it MSP-centric, looking for opportunities recurring revenue, bringing it to the channel only, integrating it on the single pane of glass. And, you know, we're going to continue to do that as long as there's technology out there that's not customized for the MSP market. Mm -hmm. I think that's a pretty simple goal. And I think those are, are things that if I'm an MSP and I'm looking at what's next for me, those are the types of technologies we'd be looking at. Mm. And I want to talk about one of those specific technologies and one of those acquisitions that Data made, um, Open Mesh. Before mm -hmm. I do that, we mentioned Austin McCord. I want to give a shout out because I think during the time of the um, you know this big story breaking, the news and everything, Austin was he was visible on all of the forums. He was on Reddit. Mm -hmm. it, it's so refreshing to see your CEO be really transparent and mm -hmm. open, and he was speaking to customers directly. So. You know, thank you for that, Austin. That was, um, and I think it gives a, a, a really good um, representation of the company there as mm -hmm. well. But let's talk tech a little bit more. I'm the geek here, and I love love the techy stuff. Um, Open Mesh mm -hmm. uh, and the launch of Dato Networking. So I got my first glimpse at uh, Dato Networking at uh, DatoCon London mm -hmm. last year. Um, blown away by the product, but more than that, I was. Why has nobody done this before? <laughs> it seems weird. It totally <laughs> seems strange. So perhaps you could explain for, for people who are not familiar with data networking and open mesh as a, as a company with yeah. the acquisitions, what, yeah. what's it all about? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, just a, just a, a comment on, on Austin and, and your comment there. He still uh, is still very active in the communities and on Reddit and, and anybody can email him or call him anytime. He's, he's one of the best coders that we have at Datto. And I think it's refreshing. Um, especially when we go to a lot of trade shows and the CEO of some large organization gets on stage and talks about futures or market trends or stuff. And that stuff's interesting and that stuff's good. Austin's the only one that gets up there and actually does a technical presentation. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's very refreshing. I don't understand half of what he's saying because I am not <laughs> technical in any sense. But I see our audience comes and they, they love that, that the CEO tends to know more about technology than they might actually. So that's kind of cool. And then when you add that to the what's the direction of the company. So you look at uh, networking and that's a, a perfect example where, you know, I did the same thing. I, got, I don't know that much about networking. But uh, Austin, you know, and, and the team over at Datto comes up with, uh, hey, we, we need to look at this because there is no viable networking solution for the MSP channel. And I, my immediate response was, you've got to be kidding. There's a thousand networking products that are out there. And, and, you know, we see them at the trade shows. We see them selling to MSPs. And I found it hard to believe that there was nobody that actually had a MSP centric offering and then we start digging in and realizing oh, there really is nothing out there. Like we're, we're taking, again, traditional technology, creating it uh, in an MSP-centric way and going to market with managed networking services. Um, Open Mesh was this wonderful little company that we found uh, that had phenomenal technology, very, very affordable access points and switches, very forward thinking, uh, cloud-based. Like So it was, it was uh, very innovative already. Um, and what we've done is just added a, a router or a router to the, to the product suite, the DNA product, which is a homegrown solution. Uh, and again, it, 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 what it does is it closes a lot of gaps that MSPs potentially have. And, you know, one of those major gaps is, for example, uh, connectivity. Um, if an MSP loses the internet connection to a site, that's a truck roll. Truck roll it equals dollars, it equals time, eats into productivity. And... Uh, in essence, takes away from, from potentially from margins, especially if you're doing like an all-you-can-eat managed services offering. So very simply, our, our DNA device, for example, will fail over to 4G. Now, it's not going to be ideal, but it at least gives you connectivity to that site. So you have the ability to go in and troubleshoot, find out what the problem is. Do you really need to roll a truck or can you just, you know, do some simple fixes? So, you know, again, developing product in the MSP mindset what are the challenges you have running your business? What are the ways in which you can become more profitable? What are the ways you can make more margin, especially on a recurring revenue side? That was kind of the birth of, of, of managed, uh, net managed networking. Yeah. And again, incredible nobody's done it before because there's these high-end <laughs> enterprise products. Yep. There's the consumer-growing products. And I see lots of MSPs using a mixture of both right. and none of them very well. Right. So, yeah, I was blown away by the idea and, yeah. 
crazier than nobody's done it before, but hey, this is where you are. You think even just like the the fact that nobody's been able to figure out the ecosystem, meaning I can do the access point switches, router, UTM, firewall, you know, can do it all in one. It, it, because when you look at the MSPs, they use multiple products on each of those different levels. And, and it becomes more complicated. It's uh, different panes of glass. It's... Uh, some integrates with your RMM and your PSA, some doesn't, you know, so it's, uh, it's not an ideal situation. And I think the MSP market, at least up until this point, has been underserved. There's a ton of vendors out there, especially ones that, that have direct sales where, you know, it, that's easy for them. They're going to focus on that. Uh, they're going to focus on how they're going to make money there. And because of the, the negligence of the MSP market, I think they've missed a huge opportunity because as you know, and you've been in this industry as long as I have, we are seeing rapid growth of MSPs that we've never seen before. This is a legit go-to-market strategy. SMBs, especially with things like cloud and, and, and uh, security, are outsourcing technology. They don't want to manage this stuff inside because it's not easy. It's more complicated than ever. So now this massive channel that is out there selling this stuff and nobody's taking advantage of it, Psh, leave it for us. We'll take advantage of it. Absolutely. <laughs> Okay, I'd like to briefly pause for a second to let you know about my new book, The IT Business Owner's Survival Guide. I'm the former owner of an IT managed service provider business myself, so I know exactly what it's like to struggle to cope with the day-to-day stresses of running an IT business. I know there are days or even weeks when you get frustrated and wonder whether it's all worth it to go it alone. I'm telling you, it doesn't have to be like that. The IT Business Owner's Survival Guide contains a collection of easy-to-digest guides and tips on how to cope with the common tasks that cause IT business owners worry and stress. If you want to learn how to save time, avoid stress, and build a successful IT business, then you don't have to do it alone. You can buy the IT Business Owner's Survival Guide from Amazon or visit itbusinesssurvivalguide.com and download the first chapter for free. That's itbusinesssurvivalguide.com. So changing the uh, tact a little bit, we talked earlier on about DattoCon. I was present at DattoCon London uh, mm-hmm. last year. Both Datto and Autotask um, have had thriving conferences and really thriving mm-hmm. communities mm-hmm. on both sides in Europe and in the US as well. Um, what are the plans for those type of events going forward? Do you think, uh, what are the plans for them? Are we going to still have European as well as US events? Absolutely. So uh, there's, a, there's a, a very specific strategy around that. Obviously, we want to touch our partner base as much as possible. The face-to-face relationship building for us is still critically important. Um, delivering value and education and, and moving the entire ball forward, not just the data product set or Autotask product set, but moving the MSP business forward. And for us to create these avenues where we can bring that group and that community together, uh, I think is critically important. Now, you look at trade shows, you know, and, and there's a, a ton out there and, and some of them are products that you use. Some of them are just gatherings where you're going to hear new presentations from new vendors. You know, those are great. But I think the most value, at least in my experience over the years, and even the most value that I get, is talking to each other. And because you've got other MSPs with similar struggles, pulling them all into the same room together, you can accomplish a lot more when you put that, that brain power together. So I think that's really super important, and I don't think that's going to change. We have taken uh, Autotask Community Live, and we are merging it with Datacon, and both have been some of the larger user conferences in the world. By putting them together, we now can make it an even more MSP-centric uh, or uh, training, uh, uh, learning uh, experience. It's become more of a global uh, event. So our upcoming one, DataCon 18, is in Austin, Texas in June. And we're literally going to have 2,000 MSPs there from all over the world. And that power of that learning and bringing all those people together in the same room, along with having great content and great speakers and great MSPs contributing to that content, along with the training on the products that you want. I mean, it's, just, it's immensely powerful. And we're not going to take advantage of that. We are going to make sure that there, everybody walks out of there with very, very good um, you know, note pages of, of things to go and implement. Um, so that's the U.S. one, but that tends to be our international one. Uh, whereas Datacon EMEA, which again is the combination of ACL as well as Datacon, uh, we're still picking a date. Uh, we're more than likely leaning towards the end of October and we're leaning towards Barcelona this year. So 
Um, that'll probably be five, 600 MSPs from mostly Europe. We're actually going to start pulling uh, and try to pull North Americans over as well, rather than just try to keep it a exclusive European conference. But that's, uh, that's the idea behind it. On top of that, we also have, and, and we continue to spend money on doing things like what we're here in Edinburgh for today, which is roadshows. Keep coming out to the community. What's new? What's going on? What's the roadmap look like? Uh, what are some of the new products we're working on? Because we're constantly evolving and, and we're constantly innovating. And you, there's no way an MSP, I barely can keep up and I work there, <laughs> but there's no way an MSP can keep up. So this is an opportunity for us to come, shake your hands, look in the eye, you know, and talk about what's next and, and what keeps you up at night and try to find you know, those, those opportunities for us to make MSPs' lives better. Yeah. So you talk to a lot of MSPs. Mm -hmm. If I was to ask you, Rob, what, what do you see as some of the trends for 2018 and beyond in the wider MSP industry? What are MSPs talking to you about? I think, um, uh, well, it can be, we can get super simple, we can get super complicated. I think uh, security is, is a huge thing, absolutely huge thing. And there's this whole... And we, we dealt with this when cloud technology came out quite a few years ago where, you know, do I migrate from, you know, I was a reseller, I became an MSP, do I not be a cloud solution provider, a CSP? And we saw very little of that move. Instead, it's still on the MSP realm, but I'm adding cloud services in. And I always talk about the, the journey of the MSP or the channel in whole is, is um, that it's, a, um, it's an evolution, not a revolution. And for you to rip everything out and go cloud only and, and now rip everything out and go MSSP, you know, managed security services provider, like that's not the way in that anybody that's done this has been successful. It's always been adding these key services in. So security has been definitely one of the bigger wins. And I, I, you know, I talked about it a little bit before where it, when you start talking about complexity, around IT, that's when the end user goes, just I'll pay you and you deal with this. You deal with the complexity of it, which is the opportunity for the MSP. Um, the great part about security, very similar to cloud, was the MSP has been doing 80, 90% of this already. They just haven't packaged it up in a security sense or, you know, basically communicated to the end user that, you know, I've already got your antivirus and malware and spam and all that stuff taken care of. Uh, backup is now included in that security stack. There's some newer stuff that's coming out. Uh, you know, they can just simply plug that into their MSP offering and, and continue to tell that story. So... I don't think it's so much a, a technology revolution. It's just more of a, a reframing the conversation and making sure that the ultimate end user understands that you as an MSP are evolving, or at least in their mind, evolving and continuing to stay ahead of all the nasty things that are out there right now. And, and uh, you know, we spend a lot of time and energy, and you saw it today with our roadshow. We just spent a lot of uh, time educating on even what go-to-market strategy is. Uh, much less what the technology does. Mm. So I'm intrigued, <laughs> longer term, um, Data have Autotask coming together, creating this big company. Mm -hmm. Do you start getting onto the radar of companies like HP mm -hmm. and Dell and others? What does it look like, the long term vision for? for That's a great question. Um, both organizations, Autotask and Data, were growing very, very rapidly and we continue to grow rapidly. Now we're doing it together under the Vista umbrella. Um, you know, does that mean that at some point we're going to sell out to HP? I don't, I don't think so. I don't think that that's what the goal is. Um, you know, the times are different. You know, these are, these are traditional uh, organizations that, um, you know, haven't necessarily figured out the SMB space, the MSP space. You know, they've, they've got their happy place in their enterprise markets, then stay in your enterprise markets and direct sales and stuff like that. You know, does that, I mean, I, I, I don't know, you know, I'm, I'm part of this journey as opposed to one of the decision makers in this, but if I had my gut feel, um, we're on a great run. Why would we change that? Why would we mess with that? Um, and unfortunately, a lot of larger acquisitions or larger companies acquiring smaller ones, you know, the, the impression of the MSP market, and I've heard it over and over again, is that that's where good products go to die. Um, that's where good strategy around SMB and, and focus on the channel go to die. And, you know, I, I kind of use this, uh, I kind of use this expression that you can't be half pregnant. You either sell direct or you don't sell direct. You're channel only or you're not channel only, right? And, you know, to talk out of both sides of your mouth, to, to, to talk to an MSP about how much money you can make with their product, how great your product is, but I'm also going to sell it direct to your end user. 
it's just, it hasn't been our way. And I think when, when you start dealing with those larger, much larger organizations, you don't have a choice there. And that's just really has not been part of our DNA on either side, Autotask or Dato. And then, you know, uh, it, I, I'm again, completely fortune telling here. I have no insight to give you, but uh, it's just not what we've been doing and what's made us successful. So why would we mess with that? Yeah. Before we go, I'm very conscious of time. You're a very busy man traveling around the world. <laughs> and you've also got a cold, haven't you, today? I, I, so I do have a little bit of a cold, so I'm, I need to get some of that. I'm, I'm holding you back from the whiskey, <laughs> medicinal whiskey here. But um, before you go, I'd just love to ask you this question. You speak to so many MSPs, so many IT solutions providers, and you have done for many, many years. Out of all those conversations you've had, if I could wave a magic wand and give you a billboard, mm. and on that billboard you could put a single message that every MSP is going to see, what would that message be? All right, I'll give you a, a perfect one. Um, it was I was at a I was at a conference in Hong Kong recently. It's all solution providers, IT providers of all different ilks uh, that were at this conference, but it was focused around cloud technology. And what happened was there was a, a little competition amongst all attendees, including vendors and, and MSPs alike, that if you had a message to give the greater community, what would that be? And I put something together and, and I sent it in and uh, that was kind of, you know, I won this competition or three of us that won it. It was a couple of MSPs, one from India, one from China, and then myself. Um, so we're gonna get on stage and you got three minutes to deliver your ins inspirational message to the channel. But as I'm sitting there, I'm watching a panel, okay? It was the last panel of the day. There's a bunch of MSPs on there. And it was really cool that what they, what they did was that the audience could ask questions and the questions would appear on the screen behind the panelists. And then other attendees could vote up a question and then that would be the question the panelist would ask, the, the guy running the panel. And there was a question that popped up and said, what vendor will not be in business in the next three to five years? And all of a sudden it's getting voted up and up and up. And it's literally like the top with like 300 votes attached to it. And the, the, the guy running the panels avoiding the question because who wants to be put on the spot to say, which vendor will be out of business in the next three years? Because chances are they're at that show. It's being recorded. They're going to see it. And you're saying it in front of, you know, thousands of MSPs. So I got on stage and I didn't <laughs> list off the vendors. What I did say though, um, and I think it's, I think it rings true that uh, all of us vendors, and that's large and small, because I've talked to the large guys, I see the smaller guys coming into the market, I see the brand new vendors that are coming in here, and they're choosing, the smaller ones specifically, are choosing channel only strategy. The larger ones are trying to figure out how to go back to channel only strategies. And I think that that's because the buying power of the MSP, it is now something that is very formidable. It's something that uh, is extremely large and really one of the fastest, if not the only growing part of the actual channel community as a whole. So I think that as an MSP, when, and I said this when I, when I got on stage, I kind of changed my, my plan a little bit, was that, you know what, I think that it's time. I think it's time that the MSP servicing the small medium market stops apologizing for being a one man, five man, 10 man, 50 man shop. Stops apologizing for not hitting quotas that, that large vendors have set out. Stops apologizing for, you know, um, uh, using a, a lackluster technology because they've got some certification level. And instead, turn that conversation around and start demanding more from your vendors. If your vendor sells direct, tell them to stop or find one that doesn't. If your vendor's not giving you enough margins or cutting your margins, stop and go find a vendor that does. And I think the response that we'll see, and we're starting to see it from the vendors out in the marketplace, is they will turn and they will change and they will make the MSP's life better because resellers are shrinking. Value-added resellers are shrinking. It is pure MSP play right now. And I think it's time that the channel kind of stood up and said, you know, here's my voice and listen to it. Fantastic. Rob, you are, and I don't use this term lightly, an industry legend. Oh, please. <laughs> I've known you for a long time. Thank you're one you. of the hardest working men in the industry and one of the, the most liked men in the industry as well. <laughs> Thank you. Um, for anybody out there who wants to get in touch with you, to reach out to you, how, how can they find you online? I, I'm on LinkedIn, Rob Ray, R A E. Uh, Twitter is Rob at Rob T. Ray. Uh, I'm on Facebook as well. And uh, my email address is just Rob at Dado.com. Fantastic. And we'll include all of that in the show notes as well. Rob, thanks for your time today. Now, my can pleasure. I buy you a medicinal whiskey? Absolutely. <laughs> or three. <laughs> I'm totally it. Rob Ray, thanks very much, mate. My pleasure. Thank you, Richard.
Thanks for listening to Tub Talk, the podcast for IT business owners. You can find the show notes and bonus content for this interview, along with dozens of other interviews with IT business leaders over at www.tubblog.co.uk. If you enjoyed this podcast, then we'd really appreciate you rating and reviewing the show over at iTunes. Every review helps us reach new listeners and helps raise the bar for success in the IT industry. In our next episode, Richard speaks with Melissa Saar to discuss about being a woman in a male-dominated IT industry. Thanks for listening, and I'll speak to you next episode. Have a great week. Okay, I'd like to give a shout out to our sponsors, The Email Laundry. The Email Laundry combines security services with your customer's preferred email service to give them a truly enterprise-worthy email system. Well, what does that mean? Well, as an IT business, whether your customers are using Office 365, hosted exchange, an on-site exchange server, or any other type of email solution, cloud-based email security from The Email Laundry is a neat and effective solution for your customer. It will block spam and virus email with an impressive catch rate. Put simply, when your customer's email server is protected behind the email laundry, they'll thank you for the security it offers them. Now, the email laundry are offering free email security for your own domain to all listeners to this podcast. All you have to do is to sign up for a free partner account through the special listener URL, www.theemaillaundry.com forward slash to blog. Use that link to have your own domain filtered for free for one year. And there's more to this special offer. If you bring on board 100 paying mailboxes during your first six months, the email laundry will give you your own domain for free for another 12 months. So that means two years of the email laundry service for your own domain for free. Sign up for the email laundry now using the special listener offer at www.theemaillaundry.com forward slash tublog. Hey team, this is Richard again. Just one more thing before you take off, and that is MSP Insights. Now, every Tuesday, I share my thoughts on the business of IT with you, the managed service community. Thousands of managed service providers already subscribe to MSP Insights. It's easy to sign up, easy to cancel. MSP Insights is basically a short email from me every Tuesday without fail with advice on growing your IT business, plus cool resources I found, discovered, or started exploring that week. It's kind of like my diary of cool things and often includes articles or books I've read, tools I've discovered and events I think you'd be interested in, often sent to me by my friends and Tub Talk podcast guests. So if that sounds fun, a short tiny bite of MSP goodness every Tuesday and you'd like to try it out, just go to go.tub.co forward slash Tuesday. That's go.tub.co forward slash Tuesday. Drop in your email and you'll get the very next one. Thanks for listening.